Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number 20 and we're going to be looking, actually we're going to be reviewing some of the benefits of genetic technology. So one of the important things that we need to do is we need to evaluate the benefits of using genetic technologies in agricultural, medical and industrial applications. This is something that we looked at previously in the last little section. So I just want to kind of give you a bit of a review, a bit of revision, um, and then we'll look at a couple of these in a little bit more detail in class. This is about the advantages in the use of genetic technologies, such as some of the ones we've talked about previously, describing specific benefits and relating them to fields like agriculture, medicine and industry, and then um, extending that onto an evaluation of the impact that those particular technologies have had in those different fields. So I think one of the things that we can do is we can start to look at some of these fields in just a little bit more specific detail, see if we can pull out some of the specific applications of biotechnology or reproductive technologies or genetic technologies, genetic engineering, genetic therapies that have been used in each of these different fields. And from those um, to focus in, I think it's uh, probably really valuable for you to have one very specific example from each different area that you can talk about in terms of the impact that it's had on that particular area and I guess on society more generally. Tissue engineering is one example in medicine. Uh, there's been a number of different um, applications associated with the use of stem cells. Now, stem cells themselves are uh, an area which creates a great deal of discussion, uh, particularly around the social and ethical implications of using stem cells. Uh, but stem cells are often uh, pluripotent or even totipotent. They have that ability to become any type of cell. Um, they've not actually um, differentiated, they've not divided and become specialised. As a result, they have um, all of that genetic information that they need to become any type of cell. And so we've used some of these particular types of cells in um, the area of skin transplants. I've talked previously about gene delivery via nasal sprays in the same sort of way that uh, Ventolin is used for uh, asthma sufferers, so that's just a spray um, in that which is breathed into the lungs. So here, either um, something that can be breathed in through the mouth or a nasal spray that can uh, go straight into the nose, which again will be breathed into the lungs. And perhaps for, especially for say, sufferers of things like cystic fibrosis, where we know that it's a, it's a tiny mutation that creates one change in the amino acid sequence for the protein that creates that extra mucus, maybe being able to target some of those cells to just change the protein that's being made might be a way to relieve some suffering. Again, think about um, the types of therapy. That's a, this is a somatic therapy. We're targeting somatic cells, so we will potentially affect the individual cells, but we're not affecting the um, future generations of cells by these sorts of delivery methods. We've also talked a lot about um, insulin and genetic engineering recombinant uh, DNA. That was one of the examples we looked at for recombinant DNA. And it's been very successful in being able to produce insulin on an industrial scale. So insulin's not a bad example if you've understood some of the processes associated with insulin production, because obviously it has very important applications in medicine, but it's also industrial scale. So it's a, it's a nice example to use uh, for industry as well. And a topic that at the time of recording is very, very important. Uh, we're in the midst of another um, remote learning phase during uh, our COVID epidemic. And so, um, so vaccines obviously are another area where we're looking uh, very specifically at the processes of producing vaccines, the types of um, material that is present in vaccines and the way that that stimulates the uh, immune system to respond in order to confer some level of protection against uh, invading uh, viruses like COVID. In agriculture, there's also been a large number of benefits, but agriculture is um, about crops and livestock primarily. So what we uh, tend to eat or what the things that we eat also eats. Uh, and so crops and livestock are those kind of key things that we are looking at. Some of our crops, of course, aren't just for um, food. Some of them, um, cotton, for example, um, uh, is used for, as fibres. Likewise, 
our livestock, we use sheep, the wool from sheep for um, a number of applications, including clothing. And so we're not always talking about food here, but there is obviously a, a broad uh, area in agriculture. And again, it's a commercial enterprise, or at least um, it's designed to be a commercial enterprise. Very, very difficult for a lot of farmers in, in the circumstances that they're in currently. Biotechnology has been about trying to increase crop yields, um, decrease um, disease incidence by conferring some sort of disease resistance directly into the individual um, plants, particularly. Crop survival in harsh conditions. So when conditions change, when we uh, have periods of very low rain, uh, for example, that that crops will be able to survive uh, through those harsh conditions until conditions improve. Uh, increasing variety within species, and of course this, is, this runs kind of counter to some of the discussions we've had around biodiversity, where quite often um, agriculture can diminish biodiversity and um, create monocultures. What we can do with our uh, biotechnology is to actually increase variety, add new genes into species and perhaps uh, increase the gene pool in that way. Crop varieties that could directly fix atmospheric nitrogen is really important too because we, at the moment we have um, nitrogen fixing bacteria that are really important because whilst nearly 80% of the atmosphere is nitrogen, it's not in a form that we can use. It needs to be um, fixed or attached to something else. Um, a nitrate oxygens to form nitrates, hydrogens to form um, ammonium ions. These are the sorts of things that nitrogen needs uh, to bind with in order to uh, be in a form where it can be taken up by a plant and also where it can be used by us. But nitrogen is a very, very important component of proteins, of amino acids. So therefore, nitrogen is a key component of what we need to have present, at least available to plants in the soil. And if there was a way that crops could actually directly take the nitrogen from the atmosphere and internally fix that into a form which they could use, then that would cut out that, uh, that extra need for um, nitrogen fixing bacteria. So this is one of the things that we've been trying to do in agriculture is to figure out how these processes occur and whether or not there is a synthetic way that we could reproduce them. Finally, um, <clears throat> this is a lot of information and I've just throw this out there for you. You can have a look at it, stop the video and, and work through each of these. But I think it's, as I said, right at the beginning, it's important that we have a number of different examples I'd say at least one from each of these areas that you can talk about. Having said that, I have mentioned uh, insulins, a nice overlapping one that you can, if you understand that, look at that process a little deeper, understand exactly what's going on, how that whole process works, how the gene is removed, spliced into the uh, plasmid and um, allowed to be expressed in order to um, collect large quantities of insulin. That is an industrial uh, scale of production. But this is just a little list. I won't go through them all. Um, enzymes and proteins involved in fermentation. Um, obviously, fermentation is a very important industrial process. We've talked about the production of medicines like insulin, but also um, hormones, vaccines, uh, supplements for food production. So the food industry have also been impacted um, very positively by biotechnology. Um, genetically engineered bacteria for um, uh, cleaning detail, I guess you might call that, removal of some of the toxic wastes uh, from oil spills, uh, and also potentially in the mining industry as well. Uh, so there's a number of different applications of biotechnology that have had a very significant and very positive impact uh, on the environment, on um, health and medicine uh, and on food production. And it's it's important to make sure that you've, you're able to, to talk about these in a way that allows you to build a nice, well-structured response in case you get one in an examination. We'll look at a, a couple of these examples in a little bit more detail during class. Thanks for watching.